Good morning everyone, I hope you're all doing well. This is just a quick introduction to this part four of the four part mini series of Mike installing the CNW, the Colorado Norton Works electric starter into his commando. I hope you've enjoyed the first three episodes. Uh, this final episode is more of a kind of a first impressions video uh, by Mike and we'll also have a Zoom call as well during which Mike and Mike's brother Dave and I ask him questions on what he thinks about this great starter motor. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll speak to you again soon. Okay, see ya. Rather spirited ride this morning into Greensboro, uh, which was nice. Uh, the bike ran well, a uh, lot of fun, and I just figured that I would check some things out since it's kind of the longest ride I've been on so far. It was about 50 miles uh, there and back. So uh, the first thing I noticed is this cover is really tight. I've already taken the bolt out, so it does not want to come off. So I'll just use something a little non-damaging to kind of help that along and you can see all of that blue material which the notes say is coming off of the inside of the belt nothing to worry about just something to blow out so I will do that belt still seems good Everything seems tight. I will be double checking these things again, probably pretty regularly for a little while until I've got some serious uh, mileage on them. One of the comments on the video was wanting to look at how I've run the wires and, and, and frankly, I'm kind of embarrassed by this. So please don't be too critical. I have started to label things. Um, I do like to label them just so that I don't forget. And uh, I've got some negative labels for the negative side. But what we've got, this is my charger lead. This is the power from the switch. Goes to battery positive. Reds on my setup are now grounds. So that goes there and I'll, I'll get a label on that in a minute. This is the cable that's part of the starter kit that runs down to the inside of the, the new primary chain case. So you can, you can see it right there uh, next to the alternator wires. So that's the one that runs to ground, goes to negative for my setup. This is the battery positive wire that runs to the starter and it it's long enough so that it loops down underneath the battery tray in between the plates over the transmission and down to the connection on the starter so there's plenty of wire there um, I'm able to kind of loop it around nicely um, and then there's you know this is the other this is my headlight relay wire so I have relays in the headlight so that I actually can see the light and it runs up through the harness as well now so this I've already mentioned is from the power from the switch or to the switch this is the part of the starter kit that is powering the relay that gets tripped by the handlebar switch so that it actually causes it to start. So, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of embarrassed by this mess, but there it is. Hey, Mike. Hey, Dave. How are you? Good. 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 How are you? Good. Very well, thanks. What, what's the weather like over in North Carolina today? Ice storms. It's all melting oh. now, though. Oh, yeah. We had a, a little bit of snow here in Oregon, in Portland area, but... We had the big thaw earlier this week. It's all gone now, thankfully. 
So thanks for your time, Mike, and thanks very much for taking the time and the effort to uh, record uh, the videos of you installing the CNW starter motor on your bike. And uh, I, I'm amazed that you were able to do all that one-handed, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was challenging. I mean, I guess the downside of doing it one-handed like that is all I'm doing is holding the camera and talking. There's not a whole lot happening during the video recording, uh, except in a couple of instances. Uh, although I would say it, it really didn't take that much longer. It probably took longer to do the recording than to actually do the install. Yes. So. Yes, for sure. I find that, you know, a little five minute fix literally takes, you know, five hours with all the <laughs> You did a really nice job though, Mike. It was very nice and clean and clear. And uh, I enjoyed watching it as, as we were editing it. So thank you very much. Well, good, thank you. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions then, Mike? No, please do. Great, well. You're probably younger than about 99.9% .9 of the guys, including myself that has a Norton Commando, uh, with all our ailments and leg problems and hip problems. So what, why did you choose to get a, an electric start on your bike? Well, I, I recently sold a couple of Moto Guzzi's, so I had a little bit of money to spend. And I started thinking about what I would want my Norton to be like, considering it's still my favorite bike by far, but what is going to make it even better to me? Uh, so I bought some suspension upgrades and did a few other little things. And then as I started thinking about it, um, I got rid of two bikes that had electric starts and I thought, well, there's two options out on the marketplace for electric starts for Nortons. And now's probably the time. They're not small investments to add to your Norton. And uh, flush with cash from the Moto Guzzi, um, I just thought it was a good opportunity to do it. The other thing that kind of bothers me about things like that, well, I don't know if bothers is a good term, but... I think the last decade has kind of been the uh, the golden age of British motorcycling. Crazy to think about 30 years after it really kind of went out of business, but there's so much good aftermarket stuff. I think part supply is better today than it was in the 90s for sure. And you have these great companies like Colorado Norton Works and you know, Andover Norton and, and others that are making brand new stuff for our bikes that are now 50 plus years old. But I started thinking, how much longer is that going to be the case? So am I going to be able to buy a brand new electric starter in 10 years when I maybe really need it? Maybe not. So I just thought it was a good time to do it. I also remember you mentioning you saw Sean's bike and you were uh, liking the what he'd done to his. Yes. Yeah, I, I was impressed with that. It just seemed like a good time. Everything came together to make it possible for me to, to buy the starter. So I'm, I'm definitely excited about it. Very cool. And how would you like it then? Is it too soon to tell, Mike, but how, how would you like it so far? Well, it's probably too soon to tell how well it's... I, I don't have a lot of experience with it. I think I took a lot of time just working 15 minutes at a time to do stuff. So I've I've only used it a few times since then. It's it's February here, ice storms. I, I haven't had a chance really to get out. I, I, I did take some shots. I rode it down the street and back. Um, and, and that, yes, it starts. <laughs> Uh, what did you replace then? I'm assuming you replaced an old belt drive. I think you mentioned that in one of the videos. So probably about 10 years ago, I got, I, I think Dave managed this and got me that Maney belt drive. So that's kind of a case in point to my earlier comment. I think Maney's retired. So I don't think you can get those anymore. And that was some beautiful craftsmanship. So it was another opportunity that, I get an electric starter that comes with a belt drive. I can then send the belt drive that I have, the Maney belt drive to Dave to put in 
his interstate seemed like a good opportunity. And that's one of your projects then as well, Dave, right? Yeah, I just wrapped up uh, getting that uh, belt drive installed and I'm in the same boat where I can't really take it out and get it finely tuned because of the weather, but uh, certainly looking forward to that. I mean, you won't even know how different the clutch is, if any. Uh, hey, Mike, you know, I know you said you'd just cobbled together old clutch plates in the past and they worked fine. I wasn't sure how hard or easy it was to use, but I bet you can't even compare yet, can you? Um, not really, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad. The reason that I cobbled them together was to get that, you know, perfect clutch height. And, uh, I, I felt that what I had before was a very easy clutch pull for a Norton. Okay. Um, and, and it's no different right now. So I'm, I'm still pretty happy with it. How long did it take you? I know you have to do all the videoing as well, but, um, sort of start to finish, how long would you say it would take typically to install it? Because I broke it up over time, it, it's maybe a little bit hard to estimate. If if I'm pressed on that, it I would say it, it's no more than an than an hour, hour and a half. I mean, maybe two hours if something. Oh, okay. I mean, the, it's all right, okay. But then I I can take the primary off in about twenty. Yeah. So you know I I've done that for the last twenty some years. I I. If you were new to this and hadn't done that a lot, it would probably take you a little bit more time just to make sure. But yeah, I, I've gotten pretty adept at, at pulling the primary apart. It's been a little while now, but so I, I don't, it's not a very long install. And it, would take, it would take me 20 minutes to clean up all the oil from the primary. <laughs> not, not anymore, you got a belt drive in there. <laughs> no, I don't. And that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to say, the next question is, I mean, it's very subjective, but uh, uh, degree of difficulty, you know, if one is easy peasy and 10 is very difficult, uh, given obviously you've been working around your commando for 20 years, how, how difficult would you say it would be for like maybe uh, a newcomer to commandos? So I would say if changing the oil is a one and tearing apart the bottom end is a 10, it, it's probably right in the middle at about a five. You, you do have some things where pulling the clutch apart can be uh, frightening the first time you, you take that spring out. Um, trying to get everything torqued down on the, the rotor nut and, and make sure all of that's proper can, can be a little daunting. It's, it's pretty straightforward once you've done it a few times, but so I, I'd put it right in the middle. And that grommet is by far the thing. <laughs> Bill, I'm gonna, I'm sticking to that. That was my next question. What was the most challenging part of the install? And it sounds like that grommet was just. <laughs> did you try throwing a little heat gun on that grommet? Yeah, I did. Did that help yeah, at all? Definitely. It helped yeah. for sure. So, how did you find the instructions? Oh yeah. So the instructions were really straightforward and. Um, very clear. And I, I think my big disadvantage in this whole situation was I did not have my bike in a situation where I just rode it up onto the workbench and just did that one thing. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing some tweaking to the bike over the last five, six months. Um, I, I put, I've redone the front end, put in some new bushings, uh, new damping, for the forks, I've changed the brakes in the front. I've done the shocks in the back. I've done a few other things. So, and I've also kind of went through all of the wiring. And so I kind of had to juggle stuff, problems that I had made myself in doing this. And if, if I was just going from, it's a functioning bike to let's put a starter on there, it'd be a lot more straightforward. So. I, I actually had changed to negative ground at, right before this. So again, that's, that's one of those things where, you know, you, you, you have to make sure you, you did that change properly. And if, if you hadn't been messing around with that, just adding a relay and a couple connections to the battery and, and running a wire for the starter switch to the handlebars, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And the instructions are very clear on how that is done. So again, that's kind of why I, I skipped around a bit. Like I, I 
I didn't really follow everything completely because I kind of had in my head, I'd read through the instructions, which, which um, are, are very detailed and very clear and made a lot of sense. And then I just kind of worked on the pieces that, that I knew kind of came next in for my setup. Did the instructions cover both positive and negative ground? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other any other modifications that it accounted for in the instructions that were common modifications that were relevant at all, or is that the only one anybody has to worry about? Uh, as far as it might be different for different <clears throat> people, I guess. So there, I, I think in the last video, I mentioned something about the uh, the little site for setting the timing. Hmm. I think if I remember correctly, because I think on your interstate, Dave, I put a sparks mm -hmm. setup yep. on that. Yeah. And those sparks rotors stick out further than the Lucas ones. Mm -hmm. So I'm just I'm thinking, you know, if I had a sparks rotor on there, I'd I'd be changing out that that little degree right. um, marker for that. But I didn't have to do that. Right. Um, the other thing, you know. I put on the basket and made sure that it wasn't hitting the inner chain case and then it felt good, but that's something you're going to have to make sure that that's true for you mm -hmm. and use the shims if it's not set up right. And, and that is all very, very well detailed in the instructions. I didn't quite get that sight piece then, Mike. I know what it is for measuring your timing, checking your timing, but does it go over the existing plate? Because the, the timing doesn't change, of course, does it? Is it right. just because of rubbing and catching that that's... Yeah, it, was, it was pretty dark. It was pretty dark in the in the video. Yeah. It was hard to see right there. Um, so, but I can, yeah. The, the timing, the thing that holds the timing marks on the factory one, it actually goes comes off of the where it mounts onto the cover and goes in yes. closer to the rotor and that might cause you uh, spacing issues okay. so the one that matt supplies is like did my right on that yeah give give me 30 seconds and i'll show okay this isn't a um, a screen image behind me by the way dave as well <laughs> it's, it's the real thing <laughs> Okay, so this is a good case in point, and maybe uh, maybe I'll be updating this in a second too. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. Is it rubbing? Hey, <laughs> it is right oh, there. Cool. Oh. So when I was uh, turning it over, I didn't hear it uh, and hadn't seen it, but it has touched just a little bit right there. Okay. So you see this step and the yeah. one that's provided with the kit is completely flat. So it, it, it basically moves it away, you know, uh, two millimeters or so. Okay. So yeah, there's a job to do. Are they screws, Mike, or are they, are they um, rivets? I couldn't quite make them out. They're, they're little rivets and has provided some new ones for putting the new ones in. They're the twist rivets similar to so, like a Triumph uh, patent plate. I think it's the same as the um, the plate on the frame too. It uses mm -hmm. the same yeah. kind of yeah. brass rivet. So, yeah. yeah. So that's something I'll just have to take a look at. I'll either bend that one in a little bit, or I'll just swap it out. It's not making much contact. Basically, anybody who's ever replaced maybe like the counter shaft sprocket uh, would would be perfectly fine at kind of putting this together. Is that if you can get that far into your bike? You mean uh, the the uh, the main. The, uh, gear bucks. Yeah, yeah, the gearbox, yeah, the front engine sprocket. sprocket. If you've yeah. never been into your bike that far, then you probably shouldn't have much problem doing this one. No, I, I, I completely agree. And, and in all seriousness, using a puller to get that off is usually the most difficult part of, of the job. Um, it, you know, if you have the right puller, it's, it's not a problem. There was this weird knocking sound through one of your videos that we thought, I thought your AC was about to blow up. What was that? Did you even notice it, Mike? Uh, I barely notice it anymore, but if you see the refrigerator, that's my beer fridge. And uh, <laughs> it, it's dying. Oh, don't let that happen. <laughs> more of your money into that. Make sure I know. you save your beer fridge, whatever you do. <laughs> Oh, okay.
And then the big question I think that we all have to ask more than anything about the starter is what's with the penguin? What's the penguin? <laughs> <laughs> so that is my oil tank vent catch bottle. Oh, so, okay. So, and then you know, the pipe goes. <laughs> yes. So the overflow pipe, I just kind of cut a hole in the back of Mr. Penguin and ran it into there with a little sponge to, to kind of catch it. Okay. That was a penguin that my youngest daughter had uh, when she was little and it stopped squeaking kind of like <laughs> Toy Story. I don't know if you remember that part, the penguin that, that was asthmatic. Wildly, um, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> so she gave that to me a long time ago and I've had it in the garage here. So I, I just kind of... Uh, uh -huh grabbed it and cut a hole in his head and now he's he's got another life so on a so on a stock bike that that oil breather uh hose goes to the air box usually right that's a, yeah I have it that would, my, and i've never had that air box installed yeah my 750 it I, I have it onto the air box and i don't know where it is on the 850 where it goes yeah on mine it's apparently it's, i need it, to pay more i can tell you where it goes on the 850 it goes <laughs> down in between the engine cradle um <laughs> And it wets the rear tire? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it lubricates it. There you go. Got to keep that rubber nice and soft. Well, I think, um, I mean, it's obviously still too soon to tell, but uh, I get the impression it's really going to improve or help with the overall riding and starting experience as well. I've, I've got other friends, we've got friends, right, that have got the electric starters. And uh, it's amazing, you know, you just get up to the bike, push the button, and you're away. And so, yeah, it, yeah it'll be terrific. Although uh, yeah. my bike obviously starts pretty easy at, as with a Kickstarter, too. Which brings, I think, Mike, you were going to, there was the other question about, are you going to take the Kickstarter off or not? You don't have it on there. I see, I don't see it on there now. We're just wondering if it's going to go back on. Uh, at this time, I'm going to say no. <laughs> but we'll see. Are you gonna Are you gonna take that and cut that sh kickstart shaft off? Well, that's what I was thinking. In order to to cover that hole, you you'd have to cut it. But yeah, it's, it's not really yeah. important out at that no. point. Oh, so if you do that, then I would just make an aluminum plug on a lathe and just put it in. Don't try to weld it on there or anything. Just make it like an inspection cap there. Well, that that was just a future idea. Yeah. Okay. I thought you could just put a cap on it and polish it, you know, whatever. It looks quite neat. And then it's always there to retrofit. Well, the, the shaft sticks out still until you cut the shaft off. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I wouldn't cut the shaft myself. But if that, if, are you thinking about doing that, though, Mike? I, I'm thinking about oh. it. We'll see. Okay. Maybe a follow. -up. That's a commitment. <laughs> 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 one of the things that people comment a lot about this starter is that it doesn't work with the stock the the ham shaped air box and what does the instructions or what does cnw say about that other than you need to buy a different air filter and in your case you didn't need to but what did what was the comment and the instructions around that uh, that's pretty much what the instructions say is that you you need to get a different kind of air filter mm -hmm. um i have a knn air filter for the the twin carbs. Mm -hmm. um, if you had like a single Makuni or something like that, it wouldn't be an issue either. Mm -hmm. um, so like I said, I've never had the stock air box. I think I have parts of four or five of them in my shed, but I've never used it. So it, it, it didn't slow me down at all, right. considering that that was a, a downside, you could say, of the kit. I was actually pretty surprised that they use such a quite a large starter that that was an issue with. I think if there was one thing that they could change, I think that would be it, is try to find a smaller starter that you wouldn't have to change the airbox. Because for a lot of people, they want to try to keep it as stock as possible. Well, but aren't they kind of throwing that whole idea out the window when you put an electric wow. starter? I mean, there's different degrees of up. that, I suppose. The other question is, is now that you've done this, what other big projects do you have planned for that bike? Well, I think this is pretty much the last one. I, I did. I did Lansdowne dampers for the front, which I haven't had a chance to experience either. Um, mm -hmm. I can tell that by pushing it around the garage, 
that I, it makes a difference. Mm. I think when I first put it together and put oil in it, um, and it, the damping was screwed all the way down, uh, you, you couldn't compress the forks. Mm. <laughs> it was like, okay, okay, this this is this is something. So then you adjust it all the way out, and they're they're super soft. So, you know, I'm I'm very impressed with that the that kit. Um, I also did the uh, fork bushings, which I'm really happy with. I've always had chin on these front forks and with these new fork bushings from uh, New York City Norton. So that Constantino uh, bushing kit, uh, mm. love it. So mm. it, it, it works as advertised. So that's good. Again, I, I haven't had a chance to really put it through its paces yet, but I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be different. It already has no noticeable stiction. Whereas before I, I could, I could compress the front forks while it's just sitting there and they wouldn't come back up. So, which isn't too unusual. And I know there's other ways you can kind of deal with that. And I've, I've tried different combinations of, of the stock type bushings and so forth. There's things you can do, but this kit, perfect. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that with these changes from the suspension, the starter, uh, it'll just make the bike more enjoyable. And I, I already can't ride it without a massive grin on my face. So I, I can't imagine how much better it's going to be, but it's got to be so much better. Perfect. All right. All right. See you guys. See you. Have a nice weekend. See Thanks. You. Bye. Bye.